Hi guys, I'm back. Today is the 25th of January 2021. Today I'm going to read 2 Kings 9 to 13, Proverbs 25, and Psalm 27. Let's get started. Elisha the prophet sent for a man from the group of the prophets. Elisha said, Take your turn to your left. Take this bottle of olive oil with you. Go to Ramah's girl. When you get there, look for Jehu. He's the son of Jehoshua, the son of Nisha. Go to Jehu. Get him away from this he went into it and said, Then get the book, hold the bowl on his head. The announcer, the announcer, the Lord said, I am on you as king of Israel. After that, open the door and run away. Do it quickly. So the young prophet went to run with him. When he arrived, he found the officers sitting together. Command, I have a message for you. And I said, Which one of us? Asked Jerry, Will you command him? Jerry got up and went into the and the prophet called the Lord of God in Jehu's house. And the Lord is the God of Israel. And he said, I am one of the first king of the kingdoms of Israel. You must destroy the royal house of your master. I will pay him back for spilling the blood of my son, the prophet. I will also pay him back for the blood of all the Lord's sons that Jezebel spilled. No, the whole house of Ahab will die. I will destroy every male in Israel who is related to Ahab. It does not matter wherever they are slaves of them. I will make Ahaz from the house like the house of Jehovah, the son of Nebai. And I will make it like the house of Basha, the son of Hedi. Dogs will eat of Jezebel on a piece of land of Jezebel. No one will bury her. Then the prophet opened the door and ran away. Jehovah ran out of the room where the other officers were. One of them asked, Is everything all right? Why did that crazy man come to you? You know the man. You know the kinds of things he says. That's not true, they said. Jehu said, Give me what he told me. He asked. The Lord says, I am anointing you as king of Israel. The officers quickly grabbed their coats. They spread them out under Jehu on the bare steps of the house. And they blew a trumpet. They shouted, Jehu is king. Jehu was the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi. Jehu made plans against Joram. During that time, Joram and his household army had been guarding the of God. They had been guarding against Hazael. The king of Aram. But King Joram had returned to Jezreel. He had gone there to give his arms time to heal. The soldiers of Aram had wounded him in his battle against Hazael, the king of Aram. Jehu said to him, Do you want to make me king? If you do, don't let anyone speak out of the city. Don't let them go and tell the news to Jezreel. Then Jehu got into his chariot. He rode off to Jezreel. Joram was resting there. And Ahaziah, the king of Judah, had gone down to sleep. A lookout was standing on the roof of the town in Jezreel. He saw Jehu's troops approaching. So he called I see some troops approaching. Get a horseman, you go around the road. Send him to ride out to have him ask, Are you coming in peace? And the horseman rode out to where Jehu, Jehu was. And he said, The king asked, Are you coming in peace? What do you know about peace? Jehu answered. Get in line behind me. The lookout report, The messenger has been for but he isn't coming. So the king sent out the second horseman. When he came to them, he said, The king asked, Are you coming in peace? So Jehu replied, Why? What do you know about peace? Get in line behind me. The lookout reports, The second messenger has reached him, but he isn't coming back to you. The one driving the chariot drives like Jehu, the son of Nimshi. He's driving like a crazy person. Get my chariot ready, King Joram ordered. When I was ready, he rode out. Ahaziah, the king of Judah, rode out with him. Each of them both went to meet Jehu. They both went in. Each of them was in his own chair. They both went to meet Jehu. They met him at the peace of the land that had belonged to Nepal's from Jezreel. When Joram saw Jehu, he asked, Have you come here in peace, Jehu? Your mother Jezebel worshipped statues of God, Je Jehu. She also worships evil gods. The evil thing she does has spread everywhere. As long as all that of that goes on, how can there be peace? Joram turned around and tried to get away. He called out, It's treason, I hate you. And then Jehu showed him out at Joram. It hid him between the shoulders. It went through his heart. And he sang down slowly in his chair. Jehu spoke to Big God, his chair officer. Jehu said, Pick Joram up. Go on the field that belongs to my boss from Jezreel. Remember how you and I. Riding together in China. 
It's behind Jordan and spot A here. It was when the Lord big this part of the evil sin. The Lord in heaven. Yesterday I saw the blood of Nebuchadnezzar and the blood of his son. You can be sure that I will make you pay the full amount of glory on this piece of land. So I picked Jordan up. Where on that piece of land? That's what the Lord said. Said what happened. And as you the king of Judah saw what had happened to He tried to get away. He went up the road to the agate. Jehu chased him. He shot. Kill him too. Jehu's men went to Ahaziah and his chair. It happened on the way up to Gurney Ibrahim. But Ahaziah escaped to make that. And that's where he died. Ahaziah's servants took him to Jerusalem in his chair. They buried him in his family tomb in the city of David. Ahaziah had become king of Judah. It was on the eleventh year of Jordan, the son of Ahab. Jehu went to Jezebel. Jezebel heard about it. So she put makeup on her eyes and fixed her. When she looked down of Luke, Jehu entered the gate. The Lord. Jezebel said to him, You are just like Zimri. You murdered your master. Have you come here in peace? Jehu looked up at the window. Who was on my side? He called her. Who? Who? Two or three officials looked down at him. And they threw her down, Jehu said. So they threw her down. Some of the blood splashed on the some of it splashed on Jehu's chariot horses as they ran over him. Jehu went inside. He and Jehu, the Lord put a curse on that blood. He said, Take proper care of the body, bury her. And after all, she was a king's daughter. So they went out to bury her, but all they found was a head to eat and hands. They went back home with the head to Jehu. He told them, That's what the Lord had said would happen. He announced it through a servant of mine. Who was from Tishma? He said, On a piece of bread at just the milk, the dogs will eat up Jezebel's body. Yes, her body went up as garbage on that piece of bread. So no one will be able to say, Here's where Jezebel is buried. He has her family in the city of Samaria, and had a child of 70 sons. Jehu put some pledges to the officials of the sea. He sent them to the elders and the, and he sent them to the people to care of Ahab's children. Jehu said, Your master's sons are me. And those who have chariots and horses and weapons, and you are living in a city that is how it was written. As soon as you read this letter, here's what I want you to do. Choose the best and the most respected son of your master. Place him on your spot like your own spot. Then fire for your master's warehouse. The leaders of Samaria. Yeah, we're terrified. He said, King Jordan and King Ahaziah can stand up against you. So how can we? A city governor and a person in charge of power sent a message to Jehu. The message was to show up the elders and the people who took care of Ahab's job. Now the message they said, we will serve you. We will do anything you say. And we won't appoint anyone to be king. Who do you think is best? And Jehu wrote them a second letter. He said, you are say you are on my side. You say you will obey me. If you really need it, bring me the heads of your master's sons. Meet me in Jezreel by this time tomorrow. But there were seventy royal princes. They were with the most important men of the city. Those men were in charge of raising them. And when Jehu's there arrived, the men went and got the princes. They killed all seventy of them. They put their heads in baskets. Then they sent them to Jehu in Jezreel. Then the, when the messenger arrived, he spoke to Jehu. He, he told them, the heads of the princes have been brought here. And then Jehu ordered the men. Put them in two piles. Stack them up, stack them up at the entrance of the city gate until morning. The next morning Jehu went out. He stood in front of the wall of people. He said, You aren't guilty of doing anything wrong. I'm the one who made plan to confirm Master Jordan. I killed but who killed all these? I want you to know that the Lord has spoken against the air and has not a word of what he has said will fail. The Lord has done exactly what he announced through his servant Elijah. And he so Jehu killed everyone from in a from Ahab's family who was in Jezreel. He also killed all Ahab's chief men. And he and killed Ahab's close friends in his prison. He didn't leave anyone alive in Ahab's family. Then Jehu started out for Samaria. At Beth Akinor of the shepherds, he saw some people. 
the reality of the hate, the penalty, here he asks, who are you? They say, we are the hazy's realities. We come here to visit the family of the king and his mother. And of his mother. Take them alive, Jehu. So his men took them alive. Then they killed them by the will of death. Again. They killed a total of 42 of them. Jehu didn't leave anyone alive. Jehu left there. Down the way, he met Jehonadab. He was the son of Rekha. Jehonadab was on his way to meet Jehu. Jehu greeted him. He asked, Are you my friend? You know I'm your friend. I am, Jehon the Dead answered. If that's true, said Jerry, hold out your hand. So he did. Then Jerry helped him up into the chariot. Jerry said, Hold on. See how committed I am to serve the Lord. Jerry had Jehon the Dead work in his chariot. Jerry came to smile. He called everyone there who was left from Ahab's family. And so he completely destroyed Ahab's long house. That's what the Lord said would happen. He had spoken that message to Elijah. Then Jehu brought together all the people. He said to them, Ahab served the God named Baal, and I will serve him a lot. Send for all of Baal's prophets. And also send for all his priests and the others who said, Make sure that not a single one is missing. They are going to hold a great sacrifice on the Baal. They know he doesn't come and be killed, but Jehu was lying to them. He was planning to destroy everyone who served them. Jehu said, Call everyone together to honor Baal. So they did. Then he sent a message to all three of them. All of those he said about me. Not a single one of them stayed away. They crowded into Baal It was full from one end to the other. Jehu spoke to the one who took care of the sacred groups. He said, He told him, Bring roots for everyone who said about And he so he brought the roots out for them. <clears throat> then Jehu went into Baal's temple. Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, went with him. Jehu said to those who said about Look around. Make sure that no one who serves the Lord is here with you. Make sure that only those who serve Baal are here. So they went in to offer sacrifices and burn offerings. Jehu had stationed 80 men outside. He went, I'm placing some men in your hands. Don't let a single one of them escape. If you do, you will pay for his life with yours. Jehu finished sacrificing the burnt offering. As soon as he did, he gave an order to the guards and officers. He commanded don't say and kill everyone. Didn't let a single one of them escape. So they cut them down with their swords. The guards and officers threw the bodies outside. Then they entered the most sacred area in Baal's temple. They brought the sacred stone of Baal outside. They burned it up. So they destroyed Baal's sacred stone. They soon tore down Baal's temple. People have used it as a public toilet to this day. So Jehu destroyed the worship of the god named Baal. In his own. But he did turn away from the sins of the Jeroboam, the same leader. Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit those same sins. Jehu worshipped the golden coals of Bethel and death. The Lord said to Jehu, You have done well. You have accomplished what is right in my eyes. You have done to Ahaz everything I wanted you, wanted you to do. So your sons after you will sell on the throne of Israel. They will rule until the time of your children's grandchildren. But Jehu wasn't careful to obey the law of the Lord. He didn't obey the God of Israel full time. He didn't turn away from the sin of the Jeroboam. Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit those same sins. In those days, the Lord began to make the kingdom of Israel small. Isaiah gained control over many parts of Israel. He gained control over all the territory east of the Jordan River. They included the whole land of Gilead from the by the Arnon River Valley all the way to Bashan. Now it was the territory of, of Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh. The other events of Jehu's rule are written down. Everything he did and accomplished is written in the official records of the kings of Israel. Jehu joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried in Samaria. His son Jehoahaz became the next king after him. Jehu had ruled over Israel in Samaria. For 28 years. The family was a hazy mom. She saw that her son was dead, so she began to destroy the whole royal house of Jehu. But Jehoshaphat went and called Josh, the son of a hazy. Jehoshaphat was the daughter of King Jehoram and the sister of a hazy. She stole Josh away from among the royal princes. All of them were about to be murdered. She put Josh and his nurse in a bed. That's how she hid him from Athaliah. That's, and that's why Athaliah didn't kill him. 
The child will remain hidden in a room with his mess at the lowest temperature for six years. The family and ruler is on the line during that time. And on the seventh year, Jehovah, the priest sent for the command his military gift of 100 men. They were the command that commanded Zedekiah, right? Send the guards. Jehoiada had them brought to him at the temple of the Lord. He made a covenant with them. At the temple, he made them promise to be faithful. Then he shared them with the king's son. He gave them a command. He said, Here's what you must do. There are five groups of you. Some of you are in three groups that are to go to one duty on the seventh day. A third of you must guard the royal house. A third of you must guard the third day. And a third of you must guard the gate that is behind the guard. All of you must take turns guarding the temple. The rest of you are in the other two groups. Normally you are not on duty on the Sabbath day, but you must but you also must guard the temple for the king. Station yourselves around the king. Each of you must have his weapon in his hand. Anyone else who approaches your groups must be put to death. Stay close to the king no matter where he goes. The commanders of the military group did just as Jehovah, the priest ordered. Each commander got his men and came to Jehovah. Some of the some of the men were going on duty on the Sabbath day. Others were going off duty, and Jehovah gave weapons to the commander. He gave them spears and shields. The weapons had belonged to King David. They had been in the Lord's temple. The guards stationed themselves around the new king. Each of them had his weapon in his hand. They were near the altar and the temple. They stood from the south side of the temple to his north side. Jehovah brought out Ahazus. He put the crown on him. He gave him a copy of the cup. And he announced that Joseph was king. The people cut their heads. Then they shouted, May the king live a long time. As Sally heard the noise, the guards and the people were making. And so she went to, to the people at the wall so She looked, and there was the king. He was standing next to the girl. That was the usual practice. The officers and trumpet players were standing beside the king. All the people of the land were filled with joy. They were blowing trumpets. Then the family told her royal words. She, come, she called out, Treason is treason. Jehoiada the, the priest gave an order to the commanders of the military of the military groups of 100 men. The commanders were in charge of the troops. He said to bring her away from the temple between the line of guard. Use your swords to kill anyone who falls her. The priest said, She must not be put to death at the Lord's temple. So they grabbed her as she reached the place where the horses enter a enter the pastures. There she was put to death. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and people. And he and the king and people promised that they would be the Lord's people. Jehoiada also made a covenant between the king and the people. He and the king and people promised that they would be the Lord's people. Jehoiada also made a covenant between the king and the people. All the people of the land went to bow down. They tore it down. They smashed to pieces the altars and the statues of gods. They killed Matan in front of the altars. He was the priest of Baal. Then Jehoiada the priest stationed guards at the temple of the Lord. And Jehoiada took with him the commanders of groups of 100 men. They were the commanders of the Karaites and the gods. He also took with him all the people of the land. All of them built the new king down from the Lord's temple. They went into the palace. They entered it by going through the gate of the gods. Then the king sat down on the royal throne. All the people of the land were filled with joy, and the city was calm. That's because a family had been killed with a sword, sword at the palace. Josh was seven years old when he became king. Josh became king of Judah. It was in the seventh year of Jehu's rule. Joash moved in Jerusalem for 40 years. His mother's name was Zibi. She was from Bishop. Joash did well with her in the eyes of the Lord. Joash lived that way as long as Jehoiada the priest was teaching her. But the high places were unmade. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. Joash spoke to the priest. He said, Collect all the money the people bring their sacred offerings to the Lord's son. Then he placed the money collected on the men who were able to serve in the army. It includes the money he received from people and make a special promise to the Lord. It also includes the money people bring to the temple just because they want to. They each priest receive the money from one of the people in charge.
time for the temple treasure. And then use all the little crap money to repair the temple where it needs it. You have now the twenty third year for the rule of King Josh. And the priest who had repaired the temple. So the king sent for Jehoiada, the priest and the other priests. He asked, Why aren't you repairing the temple where it needs it? Don't you gain any more money from the people in charge of the treasure? Instead, hand it over so the temple can be repaired. The priests agreed that they would that they wouldn't collect any more money from the king. They say agreed that they wouldn't repair the temple themselves. Jehoiada the priest got a chest. He drilled a hole in its lid. He placed the chest beside the altar to burn coal. The chest was on the right side as people entered the Lord's temple. Some priests priest guarded the entrance. They put it into the chest with the money the people brought to the temple. From time to time, there was a large amount of money in the chest. When that happened, when that happened, the the royal secretary and the high priest came. Okay. They counted the money the people had brought to the temple. Then they put it into bags. After they added it all up, they used it to repair the temple. They gave it to the men who had been put in charge of the work. Those men used it to pay the workers. They paid the builders and those who worked with wood. They paid those who cut stones and those who made them. They brought lumber and blocks of stone. So they used the money to repair the Lord's temple. The they also paid all the other costs to make the temple like, like new again. The money the people brought to the Lord's temple was used to make silver bowls. It wasn't used for wood cutters, sprinkling bowls, or trumpets, and it wasn't used for any other things made out of gold or silver. Instead, it was paid to the workers. They used it to repair the temple. The royal secretary and the high priest didn't require a report those who were in charge of the work, and so because they were completely honest. They always paid the workers. Money was received from people who brought guilt offerings and sin offerings, but it wasn't taken to the Lord's temple. It belonged to the priests. About that time, Hazael, the king of Aaron, went up and attacked Gath. Then he captured him. After that, he turned back to attack Jerusalem. But Joash, the king of Judah, didn't want to go to war, so he took all the sacred objects. They had been set apart to the people by the kings who had ruled over Judah before. Those kings were Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, and Hazel. Jehoash took the gifts he himself had set apart. He took all the gold that was among the temple treasures. He took all the gold from the royal palace. He sent all those things to Hazel, the king of Aaron. Then Hazel built his army back from Jerusalem. The other events of the rule of Jehoash are written down. And everything he did is written in the official record. Of the kings of Judah. The officials of Joash made evil plans against him. They killed him at Beth Miller. It happened on the road that goes down to Saul. The officials who murdered him were Jehoshaphat and Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the son of Shemiah. Jehoshaphat was the son of Shema. After Joash died, he was buried in the temple tomb in the city of Judah. Joash's son, Amaziah, became the next king after him. Jehoahaz became the King of Israel and Samaria. It was in the 23rd year of the rule of Josh, the king of Judah. Jehoash, Jehoahaz mm-hmm, ruled for 17 years. Josh was the son of Ahaziah. Jehoahaz was the son of Jehu. Jehoahaz did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. He commanded sins Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, had committed. Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit those same sins. Jehoahaz didn't turn away from for, so the Lord was very angry with Israel. For a long time, he kept them under the power of Hazel, the king of Aaron. The Lord also kept them under the power of his son, ben Hadad. Then Jehovah has asked the Lord for help. The Lord listened to him. The Lord saw how badly the king of Aaron was treating Israel. The Lord provided someone to save Israel, and they escaped from the power of Aaron. So the Israelites lived in their own house, just as they had before. But the people didn't turn away from the sins of the royal house of Jeroboam. They had caused Israel to commit those same sins. The people continued to commit them. And they. And the people who used to worship the female god named Asherah remained standing in Samaria. The army of Jehovah has had almost nothing left. The 
It only have, was 50 horsemen, 10 chariots, and 10,000 soldiers of foot. The king of Adam had destroyed the rest of them. He made them like dust at threshing time. The other events of the womb of Jehovah has uh, written down. And everything he did and accomplished his name in the official records of the kings of Israel. Jehovah has joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried in, he was buried in Samaria. Jehoash has his son Jehoash became the next king of him. Jehoash became king of Israel in Samaria. It was in the seventh thirty seventh year that Jehoash was king of Judah. Jehoash ruled for sixteen years. He was the son of Jehoash. Jehoash did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Jehoash didn't turn away from any of the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Levi. Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit their same sins, and Jehoash continued to commit them. The other events of the war of Jehoash are written down. That includes his war against the Medes, the king of Judah. Everything he did and accomplished is written in the official records of the kings of Israel. Jehoash joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried in the royal tomb in Samaria. Jeroboam became the next king of Israel's throne after him. Elijah had been suffering from sickness. Ready to have died from it. Jehoash, the king of Israel, went down to sleep. Jehoash wept over him. My father, he cried, you are my father to me. You, Elisha, are the true chariots of your horsemen of Israel. Elisha said to Jehoash, Get a bow and some arrows. So he did. Hold the bow in your hands. Elisha said to the king of Israel. So Jehoash took hold of the bow. Then Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window. Elisha said, so he did, shoot, Elisha said. So he shot, that's the Lord's arrow, Elisha announced. It means you will win the battle over Aaron. You will completely destroy the men of Aaron and Athen. Elisha continued, get some arrows. So the king did. Elisha told Elisha, stay the good. Jehoash struck it three times. Then he stopped. But the man of God was angry with him. He said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have won the war over Aaron. You would have completely destroyed them. But now you will only... But now you will win only three battles over them. Elisha died and was buried. Some robbers from Moab used to enter the country of Israel every spring. One day, some Israelites were burying a man. Suddenly, they saw a group of robbers. They threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. The body touched Elisha's throat. When it did, the man came back to life. He stood up on his feet. He said, as a king of Aram, treated Israel badly. He did it the whole time Jehovah had as his king. But the Lord helped Israel. He was tender and kind to him. He showed concern for him. He did all these things because of the covenant he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To this day, he hasn't been willing to destroy Israel, and he hasn't driven them out of his land. Hazael, the king of Aram, died. His son Ben Hadad became the next king after him. Then Jehovah won back some town from Ben Hadad, the son of Hazael. Ben Hadad had died, had captured them in Ur, whom Jehovah has, the father of Jehoash. Jehoash won three battles over Ben Hadad. So Jehoash won back the Israelite towns. This is um, Proverbs 25. These are more prophets of Solomon. They were gathered by the men of Hezekiah, the king of Jew. And when God hides a man, he gets glory. When kings figure out a man, they give glory. The heavens are high and the earth is deep. In the same way, the minds of kings are impossible to figure out. And they remove the scum from the throat. Then the most of worker can make something out of it. Remove all godly officials from the way of the kings. Then the king can make his throne secure because of the glory of the surrender. Don't bear the crown of the king. Don't claim a place among his great men. Let the king say to you, come up here. It's better than for him to shoot you in front of his nipples. What you saw with your own eyes, don't bring too quickly to call. What will you do in the end if your neighbor puts you to shame? If you tell your neighbor to call, don't tell others any secrets you promise to keep. If you do, someone might hear and put you to shame, and the charge against you will stand. But the right woman at the right time is like going apples and silver jewelry. The wise judge is willing to listen to you. It's like the gold and or jewelry are made of fine gold. The messenger trusted by the one who sends him is like a dream. By Snowy Arthur. He renews the spirit of his master. The person who brings web gifts never be given and is like the it's like wind and fire that don't produce one. If you're patient, you can win an official over to your side. And gentle words can break a fight. If you find honey, eat just enough. If you eat too much of it, you'll throw. Don't go to your neighbor's home every 
very annoying. If they see too much of you, they'll hit you. The person who's a false witness against a neighbor is like a blood or sword or a sharp arrow. Trusted songs are not faithful and trouble comes. It's like a broken ticket or a disabled foot. It may sing songs to a trouble car, and it's like taking your credit away on a cold day. It's like pouring vinegar on the wood. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to By doing these things, you'll pile up burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Now, the Lord thing that brings rain you didn't expect is a crafty tongue that brings looks of shock. It is better to live on a corner of the woods than to share a house with an angry man. Hearing good news from a man far away is like drinking cold water when you're tired. Sometimes go away from your fear of it until you really short of Then they become like a muddy spring of water or a pool of blood. It isn't good for you to eat too much rain. And you shouldn't try to search out matters too deeply. A person without self control is like a city whose walls are broken through. Psalm 28. Psalm 27. Lord, my rock, I call out to you. Pay attention. Sorry, it's Psalm 27. The Lord is my light, and he saved me. Why should I fear anyone? The Lord is my place of safety. Why should I be afraid? My enemies are evil. They will trip and fall when they try to when they attack me and try to swallow me up. Even if an army attacks me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if war breaks out against me, I will still trust in God. I'm asking you for only one thing. Here's is what I here's what I want. I want to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I want to look at the beauty of the Lord. I want to worship him in his temple. When I'm a child, he will keep me safe in his house. He will hide me in the safety of his holy tent. He will put me on a rock that is very high. Then I will win the battle over my enemies who are all around me. And this holy tent, I will offer my sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. The Lord, hear my voice when I call out to you. Dream of his kindness and mercy. My heart says, Seek him. Lord, I'll seek you. Don't turn away your face away from me. Don't turn me away because you are angry. You have helped me. God, my Savior, don't say no to me. Don't desert me. My father and mother may desert me, but the Lord will accept me. The Lord, teach me your ways. Lead me along a straight path. There are many people who treat me bad. My enemies want to harm me, so, they, so don't turn me over to them. Witnesses who tell lies are rising up against me. They say all sorts of evil things about me. Here's something I am still sure of. But I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm still alive. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and gentle, so wait for the Lord. Now that's done, I should now do the Lord's work. They spare our heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You'll be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as in grace we forgive our debtors. It is not much temptation, but the river is from the evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the army. See you tomorrow. Bye.